Learn how to be a supermodel. Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. And as always, we love to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 6 down through verse 8. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing incorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. And he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. My contention is that an ounce of modeling is worth, is worth a ton of telling, a ton of talking. An ounce of modeling is worth a ton of talking. Back when we were at the Boise Free Will Baptist Church under Pastor Jesse Dunn, the best pastor that God ever created. He's an awesome man of God, and he taught me so much over my lifetime about ministry and how to do ministry. And one of the things that we did under his direction was anytime somebody came to visit the church, we would go visit them. And his contention was that a going pastor... Uh, makes has a coming church where people come to church if a pastor goes out and interacts in the lives of the people and so anybody that would come and visit pastor jesse or or i or both of us or the visitation crew would go and and visit with them and encourage them and thank them for coming to be a part of our service one of the visitors that had come had come to a sunday morning service and and we went to their house and very warm and welcoming, invited us in, had coffee, offered us food. We just had a great visit with them. We're probably 20 or 30 minutes into the visit, and the man said, did you notice my leg? And I'd seen him walk into church. I'd seen him walk uh, all around the house. Uh, he pulled, on, I hadn't noticed anything different. He pulled up his pants leg and down his sock, and he, he had been had an amp, um, a prosthetic leg from the knee down, on the the left hand side he'd lost it in a work accident he worked in heavy construction and a tragic accident and caused it to have to be amputated he he was telling us about the process of rehabilitation after the loss of that leg and i mean it was traumatic this man was a very active man and then all of a sudden he really felt like his life was over he was in the pit of despair the surgery had gone well they they were able to to ready the the below the knee for this uh prosthetic device and he had the prosthetic device and he was at Elks Rehab Center uh, that's up in Boise. Some of you that in the Boise area will know where that's at. And he was going there on a daily basis to get therapy. And he said, man, Gina, I, I was, he was just wiped out. You know, he was almost feeling in despair of ending his life. And he said, he said one day, he said it was a rainy day, nasty day. He said, I went in there, I sat down, I was waiting my turn to get called in to see the therapist. And he said, uh, he said uh, all of a sudden, a lady came in and said, I've got a flat tire, can anybody help me? He said, and Gene, the next thing that happened changed my life. He said he got up, he said a man got up with no arms, and, and the, he, he watched this man with no arms go out into the parking lot and, and change this woman's tire with his feet. Now, how he did it, I, be, I don't know, but this man, this thing changed this man. I mean, seeing this man do this amazing thing with his feet, uh, and then he began to realize that the only, the only disability that he really was going to have was in changing his attitude about what was going on in that thing. Man, that just blows me away. Uh, there was a, when the Pope came down to uh, Los Angeles, I think it was during the times of the Summer Olympics, 80-something, uh, there was a young man that played guitar for the Pope using only his feet. He had no arms. Uh, somebody that can model what that looks like is worth uh, a, a ton of somebody else saying, it's going to be okay, uh, you're going to make it through this, uh, you know, God will be with you. Somebody that's actually been there and done that and, and, and worked their way through it and come out on the other side victorious, that's what I'm talking about. And we can do that for our children. We can model what, what stuff looks like instead of just telling them. We can model for our wives. We can model for the, the community at large by setting a pattern 
of what God would look like if God was walking in our shoes. You know what I'm saying? I hope you do. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I pray that you'd help us to be better models. God, I'm afraid we got enough of the kind that pictures are taken of, but we need to be models in our in our day-to-day -day walk. We need to be models in the patterns that we set, in the habits that we have. Help us, God, to show other people what victory looks like, what overcoming looks like. Thank you for these dear ones that are under the sound of my voice. Help us, God, to be able to accomplish all of your kingdom purposes in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good night.